My guest is the host of Roland Martin Unfiltered, a daily show that focuses on news, politics, culture, and obviously so much more. He's been on before, and he's back right now to give us his thoughts on all the latest political news. I had to talk to him, especially after what I saw transpire this weekend. Uh, welcome to the show, the one and only Roland Martin. What's up, big time? How are you, man? How's everything? Glad to be back out here fighting these allergies in Virginia, but I'm all good. Well, well, first things first. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even want to say where the hell you look like you're going with that cowboy hat on that outfit. Tell my audience, what, what, what's up? You rocking a cowboy hat right now? Where you on your way to? Let's get well, that out the way first. Well, first off, you know, my H-Town homegirl, Beyonce, has the number one country song in the country. Okay. Uh, yes. Texas Hold'em. Yeah. So, right. I, and plus the, the Houston Rodeo, the largest in the world, started starts this week. So I had to represent uh, my hometown. All right. Okay. That's a perfect explanation. No doubt about it. Let's get right into it, Roland, yes, because we saw the South Carolina GOP primaries take place uh, over this weekend. We saw another romp courtesy of Donald Trump beating Nikki Haley. Convincingly, I might add, the former governor of South Carolina losing convincingly. Your thoughts about whether or not, she, I, I think she should call it a day. It's over. I think it's clearly obvious. It's been over for a while. She's determined to stay in the race through Super Tuesday. But her support is dwindling before our very eyes. And clearly, nobody is standing in the way of Donald Trump. Your thoughts about what transpired there? Well, first, the Coke Network has already said they're pulling their campaign funding uh, yep. behind her. She doesn't have a, a pathway. Uh, I think uh, she understands that Donald Trump uh, poses an existential threat uh, in terms of to the country. Uh, and what she is hoping for with all these court cases, that something will happen that will cause that support to dwindle, but it's not going to happen. His supporters are locked in. And the reality is there are a lot of Republicans who privately, they cannot stand him, but they are afraid of his supporters. So therefore, there's really no pathway for her. And so there's no doubt he's going to get the nomination. So now it just simply comes down to Trump versus Biden in November. Does it really come down to Trump versus Biden, Roland, or do you see something transpiring with so much being made uh, about I I'm not going to disrespect the president of the United States. I'm not going to disrespect Joe Biden like that. And, and by the way, when I bring up his age, I'm not engaging in ageism. I'm not engaging in any kind of insults whatsoever, but he clearly does uh, appears to have slowed a bit and has lost a step right. a bit. Do you foresee him being the Democratic nominee, the Democratic nominee and really, really going against Trump and trying to get four more years? I do. Him? I do. So, again, barring anything health wise happening uh, between now and November, I think he is the nominee. Uh, there's no doubt that, yes, that he has. Uh, you could say he slowed a bit. But, but here's the thing uh, that I got to remind people about. So, look, the dude was 78 when he got elected in 2020. So I wasn't I wasn't clueless about who I was voting for in 2020. But let me remind all the people out there uh, who are like, oh, my God, we need more options. OK, these were the people also running. But Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative Tulsi Gabbard, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Mike Bloomberg, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, Tom Steyer, former Governor Deval Patrick, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Bennett, Andrew Yang. And so. Voters didn't pick any of Also, remember, Senator Cory Booker, Senator Kamala Harris, all of them were in the campaign. That's right. Voters didn't pick any of them. So for people to go now, oh, my God, we got to have somebody. Look, if, I, if I'm Biden Harris and if I'm Democrats, what I'm doing is I'm stop whining. I'm stop complaining. I'm stop fretting. And I'm saying he's going to be our guy. And what I'm going to say is. Do you are you concerned with somebody who you want to be out there who's virile and jogging or do you want somebody who got stuff done? And that's what they should be focusing on. They should be saying we got the infrastructure bill done. We got Build Back Better done. Inflation Reduction Act done. HBCU funding done. Insulin for, for 35 capping at $35 done. They should be focusing on confidence and getting stuff done. Done. Well, they are allowing the narrative to be driven about his age. They should be saying, who do you want? An 82 year old dude who gets stuff done or somebody mm -hmm. who's younger who doesn't get anything done? Let me let, let me say this to you, Roller. I'm going I'm going I'm, I'm to pull a first over here. I'm going to push back. 
I'm going to push back on the great role of Martin because, see, I'm in your lane. So I know my place. This ain't sports. I'm in your lane. So I, right. I, I, I let me let the American people know I know my damn place when it comes to me talking to Roland Martin about politics, okay? This is my boy. I defer to you most times. Let me play devil's advocate and push Go back. Ahead. The subject is not what Biden has done. If you're a Republican, you're a GOP member, you're going to have problems with what he's done. You're a liberal, you're a progressive, you're a Democrat, you're going to have very few problems with what he's been able to accomplish. To me, that's not the story. I don't think it's an issue of what he's done. I think moving forward, you're wondering what can he do over the next four years right. because of the slippage you may have seen in him health-wise. I think that that is the argument that folks have made. And I'll say this before I let you <laughs> chime in. I've been on the record saying this. I think the Democratic Party should be utterly ashamed of itself because in the year 2024, we are practically begging this soon-to-be 82-year-old president to run for re-election because as a party, we couldn't find anyone else that we believed could beat Donald Trump. Now, to right. me, that is a problem with that. Not Biden. Not, it's not his fault. Right. All of us getting older. This ain't Mork and Mindy from back in the day. We ain't getting younger. We all getting older. It's not a crime against him. But I do think it's unreal that the Democratic Party, who prides itself on being progressive and forward thinking, is depending on this man to win the presidency. That's a lot to ask of him, Roland. And that's my issue with the Dems. To that, well, you say well, what? Well, keep in mind, if Hillary Clinton had won in 2016, okay. you would have right now a 76-year-old in her second term. Okay? okay? So you have to think about the election, not just in terms of 2020, but also what happened in 2016. And so the reality is Biden was the candidate at that time who brought experience, competence, stability, and no drama. Think about this here. You haven't had any cabinet resignations. You have, the only drama you've had was, was the Secretary of Defense not that's telling true. them when he went to the hospital. And so they've been drama-free. Frankly, that's been great. I do think there's some media reporters out there in D.C. who love the drama of Trump. Uh, and so I, under, I understand your point about, well, there should be younger people. But here's the deal. The Democrats bench is deep right now. It is strong. But the reality is the last president who opted not to seek a second term was President Lyndon Baines Johnson. So the mo so voters had to, the moment he won in 2020, he was running in 2024. And again, I believe what they have to do is they're getting sucked into this, well, I need to have him here and here. No, their deal needs to be what we accomplish and, because I've not heard this yet, what we plan on accomplishing in the next four years. It's, a, it's about establishing competency. And if I'm them, I'm also driving home the no drama, the, the all the other stuff. That's what I'm doing. I'm saying, guess what? We didn't have the craziness that happened when he was there. It was stability. And so that's what they have to be arguing. I just believe they're making, they're playing right into the media narrative of old, feeble, as opposed to no, competence. And we need a competent leader who can be trusted with the secrets of the country. But what about Biden playing into it? You got Super Bowl Sunday. You got over 100 million viewers out there. That was a mistake. He didn't do an interview. And that was a mistake. He absolutely should have done it. I understand not wanting to talk to Fox last year. I get it. Right. But he absolutely should have done the interview on Super Bowl Sunday. That was a mistake by his people. And again, I think what they're doing is uh, that even like even when he after the special prosecutor report came out, he had mm -hmm. already made comments earlier at the uh, at the House uh, at the Democratic caucus meeting at Lansdowne Resort, right literally right next door to where I live. And he then goes to the White House and comes out again. For what? I already spoke on that. And so the mistake that they're making is they're not taking advantage of certain opportunities. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris, she's on the road. She's doing various events. But they've got to have him in the right positions. And so his team failed him on that mm -hmm. mark. He should have done that interview. Yeah. I
I, I think you're right, but I also think there's a reason they didn't do it. And I think it leans towards giving fodder or credence to some of the things that people on the right have been speculating about, because I certainly thought that was the first thought that jumped to my mind when I didn't see him capitalize off of an opportunity to speak to a hundred plus million people. But you brought up vice president Kamala Harris, and I'll say this to you, Roland, we haven't heard enough about her. I'd ask you why. Actually, I mean, I, actually you have, here's the deal. Think okay, about this ahead. here. You've heard more about vice president Kamala Harris than you have heard from every vice president combined in the last 50 years. Nobody ever talks about the vice president. Nobody. You cannot tell me, one, other than misspelling potato, you can't tell me anything that Dan Quayle did. Dick Cheney was very powerful, but he was behind closed doors. Yeah, Mondale, but you heard a lot about Dick Cheney, though. You heard Mondale, a lot about Dick Cheney. Cool. You had people thinking he was running the country. Right, right. But, but the reality is she has been out more. I think the problem is people have an expectation for her that surpasses what the VP actually does. The VP is not even a constitutional position. She serves at the pleasure of the president. Her job is, frankly, to be back up in case anything happens to him. That's really what her job is. And so Biden, what he's done, he's actually had her out front more than any of the VP. Think about how many times do you, can you recall President Obama having Biden speak before him? Nope. So the reality is she's been out there. But one of the things that she was hurt by was the first year and a half of the presidency was COVID. She literally was stuck in D.C. And the second thing is because the Senate is tied, she had to stay close to D.C. for tiebreaker votes. She broke the record of the most tiebreaker votes by vice president. So- right. Part of the problem is she has not been able to be more uh, out into the public, but she's been out more than any other but, vice president. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. You're right. And I appreciate the education on that. But isn't that when you think when you consider how she performed when she was a presidential candidate uh, going up against Biden and those folks at the time? Obviously, she didn't resonate. Um, and I think that that has to be taken into consideration as well. You have a lot well, of people who don't believe in her yeah. in a general election. But I want to read you a quote from the Wall Street Journal just this weekend because I wanted to. It was written by a, a columnist there. I believe it was uh, Holman W. Jenkins Jr. He wrote in this week's Wall Street Journal. I want to put it up on the big screen for you sure. right here, Roland. Here's what he said. It's time for Mr. Biden to step aside uh, he said the time for Mr. Biden to step aside is now. In Kamala Harris, Americans might discover a forerunner of a new breed of Democrat who actually believes in jailing criminals. It isn't impossible to imagine her brushing aside a softball Super Bowl interview to tell 123 million Americans she didn't become the first black female president to toss away the greatest generation's 79 year investment in global peace. If nothing else, President Harris would bring to the table a quality missing in the current two front runners, which would be obviously Trump and Biden. She would have to live in the world made on her watch. That's what they're saying. That's a potent argument. Some would say on behalf of Kamala Harris. How do you feel about that? I have no idea what the hell he talking about. <laughs> like, I mean, like, literally, as you were reading it, I was sitting right. there going. What the hell is he talking about? He's talking about moving President Biden aside so I, Kamala Harris can step in and be the Democratic nominee to go up against Trump. That's what but, he's saying. But he's talking about world peace and the greatest generation and jailing criminals. Here's the deal. Crime under President Biden and Harris has dropped. Major crime has dropped. What you what you you have a no, he was complimenting her. He was saying that she would put away criminals. And I guess he was pointing to her time as the attorney general in California, which, which is also which is also a lie that folks have been advancing because she was actually one of the architects of being smarter on crime as opposed to just jailing everybody. Look, okay. here's the deal. What we have to recognize is that um, one uh, that happens. You have complete upheaval. Okay. You have upheaval across the country, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have people who are articulating and saying, well, well, maybe you have a brokered convention. More upheaval. The reality is this here. Biden is going to be the nominee. Vice President Harris ain't going nowhere. So, what, so if you look at the polling data, Democrats are the ones who, oh, my God, we don't know. 
Democrats, this is very simple. Shut the hell up and get your asses in line. Because you know what MAGA is doing? Getting in line. A lot of people who said things about Trump, they're getting in line. They understand what the stakes are. This is the problem with Democrats. Democrats have a, have a unique ability to snatch, uh, to snatch victory so out of the jaws of defeat. The they will sit here. Democrats will pass a bill and complain about what wasn't in the bill versus celebrate what was in the bill. They, Democrats need to shut up and be locked and loaded and saying, we are taking Trump and MAGA out. We're going to take control of the House. We're going to keep the Senate and keep Biden in. That's the choice unless something happens with his help and he opts not to run. As of today, he's running. They need to accept that reality. Ain't nobody coming on a white horse in a white cowboy hat saying, I'm saving the day. It ain't Gavin Newsom. It ain't Gretchen Whitmer. It ain't anybody else. This is your pick. And the bottom line is they've accomplished things. Democrats have got to learn to understand about getting in line. He's running. Deal with it. Do you believe that Gavin Newsom has done that? He certainly has said that in terms of his support for Biden. He certainly has said that in terms of if it's not Biden, it would be Vice President Kamala Harris. But nevertheless, he was the one on Fox News, on Sean Hannity's show, debating Ron DeSantis over policy. And he it wasn't have. just the state of California versus the state of Florida as, as they portended it to be. It was far more than that. So there are some people out there who have said and others, although a small a small portion of them, who right. have clamored for his ascension within the ranks of the Democratic Party. But do he, you believe that Gavin Newsom has done what you said the rest of the Democrats should do? Absolutely. First of all, Newsom is, our, Newsom is focused on 2028, okay? That's what he's doing. But he's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. And that's what Governor West Moore should be doing. That's what Governor Pritzker of Illinois should be doing. That's what Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania should be doing. That's what they all should be doing. They, they, all, they should be going on the offense, not playing defense, Offense, attack, 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 beat them down. They're not doing that. And so we look at these polling data, and let's be real clear. What's, what's happening to Israel Hamas is having a huge impact on young voters. Tell us but why. Get, Tell us why. Tell us why. Well, 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 because young voters are against the slaughtering of children, and right. they want to see a ceasefire. Biden is trying to do this thing diplomatically, but it's not playing well. He's running out of time. It's going to be a problem in a state like Michigan with a huge Muslim vote. It's going to impact that. But he's also going to deal with the reality the election is coming down to seven max eight states. Georgia, North Carolina, which Biden lost by 2.5 points last right. time. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada. Those are the seven. Okay. And what he has to do is people could say, well, he might barely win. Let me tell you something. Barely winning in politics is like winning the Super Bowl by one point. You still won. Mm. His job right now, they should be on the offense every single day. They mm. are playing defense, and they're hiding. His people need to wake up and go on the offense every day. Well, let's get deeper in this because you're more qualified than most to talk about where I'm about to go. You say people need to wake up, meaning folks within the Democratic Party. What about the black community? Well, Trump well, had... 12% in 2016, had 16% in 2020. Depending on which poll you look at, it's right. 12% now or it's 20% from the black community. It literally has vacillated between 12 and 20%. You've got people, you see him at rallies speculating about the black support that he knows he's going to get, et cetera, et cetera. I'm thinking, I, I, I can't imagine black folks, Biden got 87% of the black vote in 2020. I think that would be around the same this go round. Here's the difference. I don't know as if many if as many people will show up to the polls for right. this upcoming election that's the than key. did the last election. And that's, and that's where I think Trump could get an advantage, even if he's a convicted felon with four count, you know, four indictments and ninety one counts against him. Even if he's a convicted felon, I still think he has a chance because not that many people are going to show up to the polls compared to 2020. Yep. And remember, you, you say and, what to that? And, and remember, remember what you have seen since 2012, when the last time Obama ran, you have seen a decrease in black voter participation. 
Yes. Now, what you also have to understand, remember, Trump thanked black people for not voting in 2016. I don't so what you're saying, what you're saying is correct. Now, yeah. what people have to understand is this here. And you and I are actually a part of the generation where the shift begin to happen. Black voters, 65 plus, identify as Democrats. 50, 55 to 64, less, but they still identify as Democrats. When you hit 55 and under, the number begins to drop. And so the further we get away from the black, um, from the civil rights movement, the black freedom movement, then you are seeing a different focus. So you're seeing African-Americans who are entrepreneurs who are focused on taxes. 2022, I was in Georgia doing stuff for Warnock. I talked to a black woman, owned a business, a coffee shop. She said, look, I care about abortion, but I'm not having a baby. I own this business. I care more about taxes. She said, I'm listening to Herschel and Warnock. But people will go, wait a minute, this is a black woman. Black women hate Republicans more than anybody else. So what you're seeing is a new generation of African-Americans who have a different perspective than their parents. And so what Democrats, and this is where they made a mistake, Stephen, the old way of reaching black folks, tried and true, target civil rights groups, go to black churches, focus on them early October for one month, five weeks. The mm -hmm. problem now is that, and I'll be very specific, white democratic strategists have got to get rid of the old playbook and realize you now have to actually micro-target black people, spend more money to get the same voters out, and that's what they've been unwilling to do. And now, do something for them more than once every four years. Right, and you have to articulate what you've done, explain how there's been an impact. So the problem from a, from a strategy standpoint They've been unwilling to listen to black pollsters, black campaign strategists, and people on the ground. So the problem is, at, you can run all the TV ads you want to, but you got to be knocking door to door. It has to be old school politics. And so that's the well, you got to get black folks that's going to work on your campaign willing to go door to door because let's face reality, ain't a whole bunch of white people looking to knock door to door in black neighborhoods. Go. If we're being real about it, there you go. And then if you're talking about even our HBCUs, you have to be very clear. See, when I when the Biden folks go, we've um, we've allocated seven billion HBCUs. Okay, that's a great number. But you got to say this here: the state of Florida allocated. 122 million of FAMU. Mm. We gave FAMU 307 million. See, Joe Madison, God rest his soul. God rest his soul. Would always say, you got to put it where the goats can get it. Yes, he did. What they're doing is they're speaking in broad ways. No, it has to be very specific. It's, I love that scene from, uh, remember from Jungle Fever, when Flipper was like, mine, 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 mine. The right. Biden-Harris folks got to say, we built that and that and that. We restored that and that. They got to be specific. They got to be hammering over and over and over again. But they have to understand African-Americans are saying, what do I get for my vote? If you don't articulate what you've gotten, then they're going to assume I haven't gotten anything. And so that's, that's the conundrum they are in. They have to actually spend more money and more time generating to get the same voters out. The old model, that's gone, bruh. There are fewer people today who go to church than they did 10 years ago. That model ain't going to work. Right. It's done. Yeah. Showing up to the black church, thinking that's going to curry votes and increase that's your gone. voting. That's, that's not going to get it done. That's By gone. the way, last question before I, before I let you get on out of here. Donald Trump, uh, the former president, now the leading GOP candidate, obviously, was campaigning in South Carolina this Friday. And... I know you saw this, but I'm going to because I just brought it up a few minutes ago, but I'm going to reiterate it for you specifically while I got you here speaking to an audience of mostly black Americans. I'm reading from the article of the USA Today. Trump suggested and it says inaccurately that he is popular with African-American voters. He said his 91 criminal indictments and mug shots were part of the reason, quote, a lot of people said that's why the black people like me. That, that's why the black people like me, because they have been 
hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. This is what he said to an event. He said, it's been pretty amazing, but possibly maybe there's something there. This is what he's talking about. So he's comparing himself and his plight to that of black folks uh, in the United States of America. Roland Martin, take it away. You can't, t you can't show me a black person in America who could lie on a loan application and get millions of loans and still be able uh, to buy the business. You can't show me a black man who could sexually assault a, a woman, get convicted in civil court and got to pay $83 million and he's still walking around. And you damn sure can't show me no black man who took some classified documents to the crib, stuck them in the bathroom and they still free. Ain't no way in hell Donald Trump is remotely like uh, black folks who, who've been targeted by the DOJ. And we, we know COINTELPRO, okay? Donald Trump, you got in trouble because of what you did. Don't be trying to sit and say we identify with that. But see, that's the pathology that exists there. And look, it's some people out there who are stuck on stupid, and they might say that stuff. But now, nah, bro, we're not getting away with that. And we we're not going to let him get away with it, Roland. But we know that a large, if not his entire contingent, will buy that hook, line, and sinker. And there are a plethora of black conservatives. And listen, I'm an independent. I don't always listen. I vote Democrat for the most part. The only Republican I ever voted for was Governor Chris Christie because I couldn't stand Corazon in New Jersey. But in the same breath, I keep my eyes open on both sides of the aisle right. in terms of how they view certain things. But when it comes to folks... You're a black conservative. Even some of them are going to buy that hook, line, and sinker because they do right. believe that he's being pilloried and what have you because they're just trying to sway the election because right. the Dems can't beat him on their own. That's their thinking. Well, that's their thinking. But remember, they beat his behind once. And again, if Democrats focus and go on the offensive, they can give him that second L. And let me be real clear. We ain't wearing them ugly-ass shoes either. All right. Oh, by the way, you saw that you saw them parading around talking about those shoes are going to ingratiate Man, them please. with African Americans even more. I saw that on Fox News the other day. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe Plus, it. I ain't gonna wear no shoes with no red bottom because I ain't trying to slip on the court. How about that? Like I bet you you bringing me up. You you taking a shot at me? I don't blame you. I deserve it. <laughs> I deserve it. <laughs> appreciate you, big boy. Go ahead and enjoy that rodeo. Go I ahead and enjoy that rodeo. You. All right, howdy, folks. Howdy. Take it easy, bro. Thank All you. Right, Thanks again, man. Peace. The one and only Roland Martin. Roland Martin Unfiltered. Make sure you don't miss it. Got a best-selling book out there as well. We'll be talking about that a little bit more in the next few minutes as well. I'm not finished. I am finished. My, I might be finished talking to him. I'm not finished talking about him. He's doing some big things. The one and only Roland Martin. Appreciate you, big boy. Thank you so much.